Secretary to the Minister of International Trade. Thank you. Good evening. Canadians revere nature and are recognized for that. Our desire to conserve, restore, and protect the natural environment is part of who we are. And with climate change upon us, we especially recognize the need to make significant investments in Canada's air, water, and wild spaces for our children and grandchildren. And we recognize that creating a world-leading clean economy is the imperative of our time. Putting a price on carbon pollution is a foundational aspect of achieving a clean energy economy. The balance between the natural environment and building a cleaner, greener economy is our collective challenge. And so our government has allocated $5.7 billion over 12 years in support of the implementation of the Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change. This plan, developed with the provinces and territories and in consultation with Indigenous peoples, will build a healthy environment by supporting a strong, clean economy, fostering innovation, and creating good, well-paying jobs for the middle class. In November 2016, the government also launched a $1.5 billion National Oceans Protection Plan to improve marine safety and responsible shipping, protect Canada's marine environment, and unlock opportunities for Indigenous peoples and coastal communities. Budget 2018 has proposed further investment to help grow a healthy and sustainable clean economy. Canada has committed to conserving at least 17% of its land and inland waters by 2020 through networks of protected areas and other conservation measures. Both protected and conserved areas will ensure healthier habitats for species at risk and improve biodiversity. To that end, Mr. Chair, Budget 2018 proposed a historic investment of more than $1.3 billion over five years, one of the most significant investments in nature conservation in Canadian history. This investment will contribute $500 million from the federal government to create a new $1 billion nature fund in partnership with corporate, not-for-profit, provincial, territorial, and other partners. Through this collaboration, the nature fund will make it possible to secure private land, support provincial and territorial species protection efforts, and build the capacity of Indigenous peoples to conserve land and species for our benefit and the benefit of future generations. The government is also investing $1 billion over five years to establish better rules for the review of major projects that will protect our environment, fish and waterways, rebuild public trust, and help create new jobs and economic opportunity. This is an example of delivering on a promise to protect the environment restore public trust in federal environmental assessment and regulatory processes, and provide predictability for businesses. Mr. Chair, Budget 2018 proposed even further investments to help grow a healthy and sustainable clean economy. We're advancing efforts to better protect, preserve, and recover endangered marine life in Canada with an investment of $167 million over five years. This includes funding for research to help us better understand the factors affecting the health of endangered whale species, as well as actions that we can take now to help address threats arising from human activity. Whales are vital to healthy marine ecosystems and an important part of ecotourism in Canada's Pacific and Atlantic coastal regions and in the St. Lawrence estuary. To keep people and communities safe, we also need to improve the networks that collect data and monitor changes in weather, climate, water, ice, and air. Budget 2018 proposes to improve Canada's weather and water services with $120 million over five years to help protect people and communities from the devastating impact of extreme weather events. These events, such as the wildfires and flooding we've unfortunately seen recent, recently, are having and can have a devastating impact on people, communities, and our economy. So another proposed measure of our government um, is our plan to extend for five years the existing accelerated deduction for clean energy generation and energy efficiency equipment to property acquired before 2025. The deferral of tax associated with this measure is expected to provide businesses with a benefit of approximately $123 million over five years. Finally, Mr. Chair, to ensure that a price on carbon pollution is in place across Canada, we are developing a federal system that would apply in provinces and territories upon request, and in those that do not have a pricing system in place that meets the federal standard by the end of this year. The government is also supporting the federal carbon pollution pricing system with $109 million in new funding over five years for Environment and Climate Change Canada and the Canadian Revenue Agency to develop, 
implement and enforce the federal carbon pricing system. As a member of Parliament from British Columbia and the former mayor of West Vancouver, I remember former British Columbia Premier Gordon Campbell's leadership well. I know how British Columbia, as North America's first jurisdiction with an economy-wide pricing policy on carbon in 2008, has led and succeeded, and we know, as a government, what British Columbia learned. You can read all about it in a recent 2015 report I participated in called How to Adopt a Winning Carbon Price. Here are some key recommendations. One, a carbon tax and a thriving economy can coexist. Two, strong leadership matters. Three, start with a low price. Four, commit to a schedule of price increases. Five, revenue neutrality helps to address private sector concerns. Six, a carbon tax is one component of a suite of climate policies. And finally, expect a clean environment, an enhanced reputation, and a thriving clean tech sector. The results of British Columbia's decade-old initiative to put a price on carbon is well understood. In 2012, at a tax rate of $30 a ton, more than $1 billion a year is collected in carbon because of pricing carbon, and each year this is accompanied by an equal or greater tax cut. The opportunity created by pricing carbon pollution in British Columbia meant a reduction in large and small business tax rates, a reduction in personal income tax rates, a climate action tax credit for low-income British Columbians, an annual $200 benefit for rural and northern homeowners. These are the choices BC made. Under our plan, provinces, under the leadership of the Minister of the Environment, may make their own choices too. When we began, the public supported pricing carbon by 54%. This steadily grew to 64% in 2012. As BC's economy slightly outperformed the rest of Canada throughout. For the clean tech sector, the shift has been positive. In conclusion, Mr. Chair, as Canadians, our quality of life and our present and future prosperity are deeply connected to the environment in which we live. The extraordinary beauty of Canada's nature, parks, and wild spaces are central to our identity as Canadians, and I would say, as Canadians, it is a public trust. We're forging ahead with determination and ambition toward a more prosperous future for all Canadians. Our government is making significant investments toward a strong and sustainable low-carbon economy, one that creates growth and good middle-class jobs while preser I'm sorry, preserving our safety, security, and natural environment for future generations. Thank you much, very much for this opportunity. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the... Is there a question there? Is there a comment? Okay. Mr. Chair, Canada's natural heritage is one whose protection is in the interests of all Canadians. And on behalf of the community I represent, I'm proud to aspire to environmental sustainable policies that can lead to a strong economy. It's the role of our government to set an example for sustainable development and to support businesses and contribute to a green economy. The government is investing $1.4 billion in projects through the Low Carbon Economy Leadership Fund that will generate clean growth and reduce greenhouse gas emissions while creating jobs for Canadians for years to come. Also, the greening government strategy sets an ambitious target to reduce direct and indirect greenhouse gas emissions from Government of Canada operations. So I would like to ask if the Minister of Finance could please tell us more about the federal carbon pollution pricing system. Climate change is one of our most pressing challenges. The impacts are real, including coastal erosion, thawing permafrost, and increases in heat waves, droughts, and flooding. At the same time, it seems evident that climate action creates an opportunity for Canada. So it would be helpful to hear more about actions the government is taking in this regard. Thank you. Honourable Minister of Finance. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'd like to thank the uh, Honourable Member for the uh, very timely question. I, uh, I know that she'd agree that uh, Canadians understand that the effects of pollution are not free, because I know she spent a significant amount of her career talking about that. She also knows that polluting the air that we breathe and the earth and the oceans that feed us must come at a cost to those that actually do the polluting. Pricing carbon pollution, Mr. Chair, is simply one of the most effective ways to reduce emissions. It creates incentives for businesses and households to innovate more and pollute less. That's why putting a price on carbon pollution 
is central to the government's plans to fight climate change and to grow the economy. And through Bill C-74 that's currently before Parliament, the government's taking action to reduce emissions by introducing the Greenhouse Gas Pollution Pricing Act, which will put a legal framework in place for the proposed federal carbon pollution pricing system. The Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change, I mentioned earlier, includes a collaborative Pan-Canadian approach to pricing carbon pollution with the aim of having carbon pricing in place in all provinces and territories this calendar year. Right now, a price on carbon pollution is in place in four provinces, Quebec, Ontario, British Columbia, and Alberta, covering over 80% of the Canadian population. And right now, these provinces are leading Canada in economic growth. Simply put, Mr. Chair, we're putting a price on what we don't want, which is carbon pollution, while encouraging more of what we do want, clean innovation and lower emissions. Thank you. Secretary. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I would also like to ask, because of the experience in British Columbia, how the Minister sees this benefiting Canada's reputation in the world? Minister of Finance. Speaker, it's, it's, a, it's an important question and opportune right now as we're the uh, President of the G7 countries. What I can say is one of the initiatives that we're putting forward as the uh, President of the G7 is the focus on having uh, assurance that a strong economy and a strong environment go hand in hand. We recognize that in order to be a leader around the world in, uh, in responsibly extracting resources, we also need to think about how we uh, responsibly ensure that we uh, lower emissions uh, over the long term. So that is why we are looking at how we, we price carbon and show not only Canadians but the world that a country like Canada, a country that has taken an approach to uh, making sure that we're environmentally conscious, can do that while we also uh, have growth in the economy, uh, making sure that Canadians have uh, opportunities today, but that we're responsibly providing opportunities tomorrow through the approach that will encourage clean technology options, a lower emissions, and a healthy economy. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. I would also like to congratulate the Minister on the integration of his budget and perhaps he could comment on how cities and communities are benefiting from the types of infrastructure investment that is the corollary of putting a price on carbon pollution. Good question. The Honourable Minister of Finance. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we, we know that uh, in, uh, in making investments for the long term, uh, some of the investments that have the most significant positive impact on our economy our infrastructure investments. They have that impact because they create jobs today, they make our economy more productive and efficient over the long run. Also, new investments in infrastructure often create the opportunity for us to be more environmentally conscious over the long term. Investments in uh, public transit are a good example. So the kinds of investments we're making together with municipalities and with provinces are intended to make lives of Canadians better to enable uh, cities to have better public transit system, enable provinces to have a better way of approaching uh, the challenges that they face in collaborating with cities to get these projects done. So we're finding a very responsive and uh, effective way of uh, working together with provinces and municipalities, getting things done, and as a result, in direct answer to the question, uh, getting to uh, agreements with them uh, that are uh, showing the benefits that we want to show for Canadians. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Another aspect of our investment that is uh, really exciting and synergistic and shows tremendous potential is our superclusters announcement. Um, it is, offers a lot of hope for the kind of clean green economy we're wishing to build. Perhaps the Minister could comment on that. The Honourable Minister of Finance. I, I am very pleased, uh, Mr. Speaker, to, uh, to talk about uh, what we're trying to achieve with the superclusters approach, which, as the member mentions, uh, is about growing our economy. It's also about finding ways to grow, grow our economy in an environmentally conscious way. What we've done is we've said that in order to find ways to accelerate economic growth, we need to consider the nexus of investment required between companies, large and small, research institutes and universities, so that we can actually create more economic advantage through those investments. Uh, we've chosen some recipients for uh, that supercluster funding. 
uh, through a very competitive process. And that includes one recipient that is uh, focused on, on clean technologies and how we can uh, significantly improve our ability to uh, generate opportunities in that sector. We'll continue with uh, this approach and uh, we are convinced that we will be able to accelerate our economic opportunities uh, in specific sectors that will be positive for the long term for our economy. 